Hi, everyone. Welcome back uh, for this um, afternoon. Um, so this afternoon is um, dedicated to P7. Um, so we're going to have a general presentation by my colleague, George, uh, and uh, followed by three uh, customer use cases. Um, so uh, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's kick things off. Um, so George is uh, is application engineer uh, working uh, in uh, uh, that advance, um, and so uh, he has uh, prepared for you a global overview of uh, of P7. Uh, so George, uh, the floor is yours. Reconnected. Uh, okay. So let me begin my presentation. Uh, again, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, George Birikov. I am working in that advance as an application engineer and. This position, I'm responsible for helping the customers uh, use P7 to solve their tasks in various domains. In my presentation, I will introduce you to, Puff, to one of our projects, uh, P7, and will give an overview of uh, its main features. Uh, to begin with, uh, let me remind you of the P7 product line. In the center, we have uh, P7 Core, which is a Python library with a set of tools and algorithms which provide a solid foundation for other products. Next, we have uh, P7, a desktop application that uh, provides advanced tools for engineering tasks packaged in an easy-to-use uh, graphical interface. And the last layer is uh, P7 Enterprise, a cloud-based solution focused on collaboration and automation at enterprise level. In this presentation, we'll talk about the desktop version. So if I mention P7 later, I'll be referring to P7 desktop. All P7 features can be divided into three main groups. First of all, in P7, it is possible to automate the simulation processes by integrating commonly used software with the help of integration and the automation features. Secondly, we offer a set of exploration tools uh, which allow users to study and analyze their processes. And finally, prediction features allow you to create approximation models based on existing data. Now we will look at each of these groups in more detail. Let's begin with uh, process automation. So every engineering project includes a series of processes. If these processes are repetitive and can be formalized, then you can benefit from their automation which will result in increased efficiency and future cost savings. In P7, engineering process can, can be captured as a sequence of actions called workflow. These simple actions can be represented as blocks from a built-in library, and by adding links between them, you can set up the data flow. Blocks, which are highly configurable, and workflows provide an intuitive way of uh, creating advanced data flow structures, such as cycles, uh, conditional and parallel regions, and more. So even complex integration, modeling, and optimization tasks uh, can be solved without writing a line of code. Often, engineering tasks require running third-party CED and uh, CE tools. With uh, P7, it is possible to integrate such software inside the workflow to fully automate your design process. Integration blocks provide an interface between a P7 workflow and some program, for example, a CED package or a solver, uh, making it possible to run simulation or analysis in this program and use its results in the workflow. All integration blocks can be divided into two groups, uh, direct integration blocks, which are program-specific blocks. Uh, their number is limited, but uh, they are quite easy to configure and uh, generic integration blocks. They allow integration of any program which has common client interface. Uh, such blocks provide uh, greater, fle uh, greater flexibility than direct integration blocks, but often require some scripting or manual command input. Uh, now that we have an automated process, we can start exploring it by rerunning with uh, different inputs. This process can be facilitated by design space exploration features. P7 provides a set of tools and methods for studying a large number of designs and identification of optimal ones. So if you have a parameterized model, then you can explore how it will behave at uh, different parameter values. All design space exploration techniques can be subdivided into two types, 
either design optimization or design of experiments. Uh, so what is design optimization? This is a mathematical approach uh, to find the best possible solution from a set of available options, considering specific objectives and constraints. It involves uh, defining an objective function, which could be to maximize profits, minimize costs, optimize performance, or achieve other defined goals. Uh, constraints uh, such as physical limitations, uh, budget constraints, or resource availability are also considered. Uh, with uh, design optimization, it is possible to answer such questions as uh, how to improve the product characteristics or which combinations of input parameters uh, will be the best. Uh, to set up an optimization test, uh, we need to decide uh, which parameters uh, we will vary. Uh, what will be the objective function, and what constraints uh, we need to respect. Often in engineering field, optimization tasks have a set of specific aspects that often block the use of open source or academic tools. Such aspects can be easily considered uh, during the design optimization process in P7. For example, in case of large dimensionality, P7 allows to handle optimization problems with uh, hundreds of design variables, dozens of constraints, and multiple objective functions. Uh, P7 also supports uh, advanced problem statements. So any combination of tasks with uh, continuous and discrete variables, with uh, linear and nonlinear constraints, or with noisy objective uh, is possible. One of the benefits of uh, design optimization in P7 is the so-called uh, smart selection. This is a feature of uh, design space exploration block that uh, automatically chooses uh, most efficient technique for the given type of problem and data. Uh, it allows the user to focus on his engineering task rather than on study of different optimization algorithms. Uh, typical optimization task uh, may be set up uh, not only to increase somehow the efficiency, but to identify known model parameters so that the computational model would better reproduce the results of the experiment. Uh, like in this particular case, engineers from Formula student uh, needed to build a model of uh, the lights or tire dynamics for future studies. To build such model, they needed to define the values of uh, six scale factors, which uh, characterize physical properties of the tire. But uh, because the forces that appeared in the contact patch of the tire with the track during simulation were pretty low, uh, their change couldn't be associated with a particular value of each scale factor from the diagram provided by the manufacturer. Uh, because of that, they had to conduct an experiment and uh, calibrate the model so that uh, the results of the simulation would well agree with the experiment. To do that, they successfully integrated their MEC model into P7 and solved a single criteria problem with uh, six variables using gradient-based optimization. As a result, they achieved uh, better accuracy of the model uh, compared to their previous approach. Uh, such optimization study reduces uh, time for identification of unknowns and can, can be re reused in the future. Uh, in the case described above, uh, you'll need the same workflow uh, if you want to calibrate the model with a different type of tire. Uh, even if you don't have a well-defined objective in your study and you still want to analyze the design space, this is possible with the help of another part of design exploration called uh, Design for Experiments or DOE. This includes a number of algorithms and techniques uh, to generate a set of uh, corresponding inputs and outputs of the model for solving such tasks uh, as uh, generating a uniform sample in design space, uh, which can be needed as initial data in optimization or as a training sample for model building. Or for example, the effect of certain parameters on the outputs and their sensitivity can also be studied uh, with DOE. P7 provides uh, all these features in an easy-to-use graphical interface with a number of post-processing tools. Uh, it's possible to create and process plots, uh, tables, parallel coordinates, and correlation matrices. Uh, DOE can also be used for solving more complex tasks. For example, if you want to explore design space under certain constraints 
Adaptive DOE can be used to generate a uniform sample in feasible domain. Or adaptive design technique can be used to analyze behavior of the responses and generate more design points in areas of interest. For example, the areas with high function gradients. Also with uh, adaptive DOE, it is possible to conduct a contour restoration study. In this case, uh, more design points which evaluate to given response value will be generated. Uh, just as with uh, optimization, suitable DOE technique will be proposed uh, by the smart selection automatically based on the problem statement. Uh, in simple words, adaptive design technique allows you to find a set of designs uh, taking into account the limitations. Uh, for example, uh, in this use case, uh, we only know what restrictions uh, we need to comply with, uh, but we still want to obtain a set of feasible designs for future research with a limited budget. Uh, the goal of this study was uh, to find the designs of a turbine blade whose icon frequencies wouldn't interfere with the exciting frequency of the turbine to avoid resonance. Uh, these forbidden frequency ranges were treated as a constraint and with the help of adaptive DOE technique in P7, it was possible to find two times more feasible designs than with uh, uniform DOE under the same computational budget. Uh, this was especially crucial because the uh, CE simulation was very expensive for this model and such approach allowed to save uh, plenty of time. Of course, uh, similar results could have been obtained manually, but it would take uh, much more time and uh, not all designs would be found. Uh, furthermore, uh, obtained uh, during DOE datasets uh, can be used to substitute the computational model uh, with the analytical one. In P7, this is possible via predictive modeling features. Uh, they allow to predict uh, product behavior in various conditions, uh, different from simulated and measured ones. Uh, predictive models uh, built with uh, approximation techniques uh, can act as a substitution of existing data, analytical model, or simulation. Uh, this is helpful if the number of experiments is limited or the simulations are computationally expensive. Uh, P7 includes a set of tools for building and managing predictive models that can work both with uh, data gathered from P7 workloads and data sets imported from CSV or Excel files. Uh, the models can be evaluated to get predictions, uh, integrated into a workflow, or exported for use in external software products, for example, in system modeling applications. Uh, for joint usage of data from experiments and simulations, uh, P7 provides uh, data fusion features. Uh, with data fusion, the number of expensive experiments and simulations can be reduced due to more accurate predictions made with such models. Also, predictive modeling in P7 allows to conduct uh, dimension reduction. For example, if the geometry of the model is represented as a set of multidimensional points, it can be approximated with a smooth hypersurface, which allows to automatically reconfigure geometry with a smaller number of parameters. Uh, after creation of such predictive model, it can be exported to a neutral format for use in future research in other softwares. Uh, in this use case, uh, the first step was uh, similar to the tire story. Experimental data was uh, used to identify the parameters of the theoretical function and uh, at the second stage, an approximation model was built in order to establish a correspondence between function parameters and physical values that were the inputs of the process. Uh, engineers from Mitsubishi Motors uh, needed the ability to simulate internal combustion process. Uh, because such process uh, is hard to simulate, they decided to build an approximation model of internal combustion engine based on well-known uh, WIP function. To do that, engineers conducted an optimization study in P7 to fit the parameters of the function to existing experimental curves. As the next step, an approximation model was created to predict these parameters at arbitrary regimes uh, using known physical conditions. Uh, this created approximation model was uh, ready to be used in 1D engine simulations as part of a large-scale complex process. With the help of approximation model, the high accuracy was transferred to a lower, lower level of simulation, uh, which is a typical example of the use of approximation in engineering problems. 
to summarize, uh, during this presentation, we observed how P7 could be used to uh, capture and automate engineering processes in the form of a workflow with the aid of integration blocks. Uh, explore simulation and experimental data with tools for design exploration and uh, predict responses for new designs or operational regimes of the product with uh, predictive modeling. Uh, thank you for your attention and I'm ready to answer your questions if you have any. Okay, thank you, George, for this presentation and for this nice overview of P7. Uh, so as we have a couple of minutes uh, left, uh, I'm going to try to see if we have any questions in the Q&A section. Just a moment. Uh, yeah, so first question. All the methods you presented are valid for deterministic variables. Do you provide any features for handling stochastic variables? Uh, yes, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, indeed, uh, P7 has uh, some features for uncertainty quantification uh, to deal with uh, this kind of uh, problems. Uh, using this functionality, you can specify different uh, distribution models for variables uh, or your inputs and uh, investigate the distribution of objectives or check the probability of uh, violation of certain constraints. So yeah, this is also possible. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe we have time to take another question. Um, I have another one here. Can you run simulations on a remote cluster via P7? Uh, yes, uh, the blocks which I presented uh, in the beginning, uh, integration blocks, uh, they support different types of uh, remote execution. For example, uh, they can be used to establish SSH connection to remote Linux machines. Uh, for running simulations there. Uh, also, such blocks provide a direct interface for such HPC job schedulers as uh, Slurm and Torque, for example. And the uh, last option uh, in P7 uh, is a P7 agent. Uh, this is a special application which can be installed uh, on a Windows or Linux machine. And uh, it can be used uh, for launching different software installed uh, on this machine uh, from your P7 on a different computer. Okay. So, yeah. Well, thank you for your answers. And uh, as we finally manage to get back on time, I think we should stop the Q&A <laughs> uh, sessions now. And uh, I invite everyone to move on to the next session, which is presented by Yuta Yamada uh, from SCSK Japan. Uh, the title of the presentation is The Frontier of P7 Data Science Use Case in Japan. So please, everyone, move on to the next session manually and see you there in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you.